administrator and most currently as the regional director for business development. Previously, she worked at Delta Medical Center as director of senior care and the executive director of business development and marketing. Prior to Delta, she served as administrator for St. John's Hospital Psychiatric Pavilion in San Angelo, Texas. She currently serves on the board of directors for the Alzheimer's and Dementia Services and immediate past president. She serves on the board of directors for the Professional Network on Aging as legislative chair and is a past president of that organization. She is a past president of Creative Aging of the Mid-South, Business and Professional Women of Tennessee, the Ruth Mackey Cancer Foundation, and the Sales Club of Memphis. Lynn's additional community involvement includes hosting a cable talk show, Health Awareness, on WYPL television, volunteering for the United Way of the Mid-South on the Funds Allocation Committee, and delivering presentations to health churches and civic organizations on topics including coping with depression, managing stress, leadership, team building, brain health, and building <coughs> skills. She was awarded the 2017 Bob Bernstein Senior Advocacy Award by the Professional Network on Ag Aging. And with how busy she is, I am just surprised and delighted that she made time for us today uh, to speak with us about coping with change. Thank you, Mary Lou. Can you hear me? Everybody hear me okay? All right, well, this is a little interesting, just as any presentation is, um, when you're not able to get a lot of response. So if it looks like I'm, I'm fading fast, somebody unmute their mics and laugh or cry <laughs> or do something. But anyway, it's great to be with you today. Let me tell you what happened to me just this morning. You know, Facebook uh, can be your true friend or your true enemy. But this morning, I, I don't do a lot of those tests you know, that say, can you tell the difference in the dogs or uh, look at this word puzzle or whatever. I just don't do those things. I, I don't know why I don't do them. I just don't. But this morning, there was one of those word things and I just did it. And it said the first three words you find um, will, will, will make the difference in your life or will give you direction for your life or whatever. And so I did it. And guess what the first three words were that I found? Change strength, breakthrough. And I loved that. And I thought, what a, what a great day for that to happen, because that's some of what I'm going to be talking about today. Let me start by saying there are many things about me, same with you, that we just can't change. We can't change who we were born to. We can't change what we look like. Uh, there are some changes we can make down the road, but for the most part, we are who we are. Um, we can't change how tall or how short we are. I'm sitting on about three pillows here. If I fall over and crash, Joe, Mary Lou, somebody pick this up, okay? Because that could uh -huh. happen because I'm much shorter <laughs> than it looks like. And, and, and with, with, with true transparency, I um, also can't feel my legs sometimes because it cuts off the circulation because of the tall chair I'm sitting in. So there you go, a lot of information. But there are things I can't change. There are many more things that I can change. I can change the color of my hair. Believe me, I need to right now. I used to do it about every six weeks, and it's been a long while, so you'll just have to deal with these different colors of hair. I can change um, things about myself, like my attitude, and I can change it every day. I can change whether I look at things in a positive way or a negative way. And I can certainly change the way I treat people. I can change my outlook. So change can be good, but change can be daunting. And I wanna talk for just a few minutes about how difficult change can be. Change, um, like is in the world today, can be such a jolt to our system that we're just almost rendered helpless. It's like somebody pushes us from behind and we fall forward and then we struggle with knowing how to get up. 
And the change of the world right now is somewhat like that with this pandemic. It didn't really come out of nowhere, but it felt like it came out of nowhere. And for most of us, we struggle on a daily basis to just put our arms around it. What does the pandemic mean? What does it mean to our world? And what does it mean personally to us, to me? And with this pandemic, there comes such a challenge for us to make changes in everyday living, how we think and how we respond, how we react. So we're going to talk today a little bit about that. Because change sometimes happens quickly, as this one did, it can rock your foundation a little bit, it can make you a little dizzy. And sometimes it can change the very part of us that feels in control. And loss of control is something that I think we all feel during this time. That would be my dogs. If I mute them, you can't hear me. If you can hear them in the background, I may have to leave this chair and go kill them in a minute. So <laughs> just trust me on that one. Uh, I can't, can't stop them from working or protecting me. Um, but control, loss of control is difficult. Most of us have a plan for ourselves. Um, if you think about it, we have a plan for every single day. And some of it you just don't think about. It's just rote. You get up in the morning, uh, you, you, you crawl out of bed, usually to an alarm. Um, you get in the shower. You get dressed. Um, you do those kinds of things. You don't even think about them. Sometimes you get in the car and go to work. Most of the time that's what we do if you work. If you work from home, then you get up and you get dressed and you work from home. Things have changed a little bit. I, here's what I'm used to doing. I'm used to being with people all day long. So one of the things that I do is I get, up, I get dressed, I get in my car, I start my car, and I go to the first place on my list. And most of the time, that's an appointment with somebody to tell them about the services that we have at Unity. Sometimes it might be breakfast with someone. Uh, sometimes it might not just be a colleague. It might just be a friend. But I will do that every day, and then all day long, I'm out doing those things, whether it is a meeting or whether it is um, uh, selling my product. And that's what most of us do. So now, guess what? We don't do it just like that anymore. I can't sit across from you unless I maintain six feet distance. And most of the time, even then, I'm going to be wearing a mask. You don't hear me as well. I don't hear you as well. We're trying to communicate. But to tell you the truth, in the business that I'm in, I don't really even have that luxury. Nobody wants to see me coming in a long-term healthcare facility, in a skilled nursing, in an assisted living, um, in an independent living. Those are the places I'm working. Guess what? Those people don't want to see me. And guess what? I don't really want to see them. So things have changed for me. Let me talk just a little bit about that change. So it used to be that I did the same thing pretty much every day with different players. Now I'm at home a lot of the time. And when I'm out, I'm delivering something to those people. I'm not seeing them. I'll get an email from them later, but I don't have the ability to talk face to face. And for a real talker, and I'm one of those, it could get a little bit lonely. And sometimes you question yourself, am I doing everything right? Because change has happened and we're a little bit out of control. When it very first started, uh, my husband sat here because his office is right here. I sat in the kitchen and my laptop, my laptop and we worked and we didn't talk. And that's, that's kind of not like us, but we couldn't. We had to sort of separate things out. It was a change. And it was a change that we had to learn to control, or it controlled us. So things are different. COVID makes us feel out of control. We're scared of what's happening next. Let me ask you this. How many times do you turn on the TV and then immediately turn it off? Because you really don't want to hear what it's saying. You really don't want to. Mary Lou, you, Joe, you, lots of you out there raising your hand because, oh, my goodness. It's scary, 
but some good things have happened with change. And I want to talk about those for a little while because we have to embrace those and we have to take those and make them work for us. So one of the things that's happened is we learned to Zoom. How many Zoom meetings are you involved in? How many Microsoft team meetings are you involved in? Google Meet. How many times do you a day do something different than you've ever done before? And believe it or not, for a lot of you, and probably all of you, we're beginning to feel a level of comfort with it. It's not quite as scary as it was the first time. I'll have to tell you, the first time I did a Zoom meeting, I could never get anything to work, so I had to do it from my phone. And from your phone is not your optimal way to do Zoom, because you look sort of like a little postage stamp or something, but I had to do it anyway, because that's the only thing I could work with. Now I'm learning to do better. I don't always like how I look on Zoom, but it is the way things are, and I'm learning to accept that. This is different for me. I'm used to being in a room and, you know, where people respond. And, and thank you for those of you who raised your hands, but I'm used to doing that. So when you're a presenter, you all of a sudden don't know whether people are agreeing with you, laughing at you, leaving the screen to go do something different because you're just really boring. You don't really know. So you have to work with those unknowns, but it makes you stronger in what you say. You weigh your words differently. And that's another change that's happened to us during COVID. We've learned to depend on things like emails, telephone calls, text, now, I'm just going to take this few minutes to talk to you about this because I feel led to, so I'm going to. Email and text can be wonderful things. that They can change your life during this time. Facebook can even be a wonderful thing. But let me tell you that all those things can be the spawn of the devil if you are misusing them. Like, for example, understanding that on emails, um, you're... You're, you're telling a story. You're asking somebody for something. You're telling somebody about a change. If there's a reason for an email. Make that email count. Before you send it, reread it. Because right now, people are not seeing you face to face. They're seeing you through that email. Make sure you're doing it right. Because that's the first thing. The second thing is, um, it's a pet peeve of mine, so I'm going to talk about it a little bit. During the pandemic, folks use social media a lot more, and we Facebook, and we Facebook a lot, and sometimes it keeps us from being lonely, and sometimes it keeps us centered with our friends, and sometimes it makes us angry, and sometimes we prompt anger in people by the things that we say. You guys be careful on Facebook. I mean, I, I know that we all have platforms. We all have feelings. Uh, there's nothing wrong with expressions. But just remember that emails, Facebook, text, those things aren't immediately erased because you feel sorry for what you said. They're etched in somebody's mind for a long time. So be careful about that because while the pandemic has made us communicate in a different way. And there's good about that. There's also some sketchiness about that. Be careful. It's important. After the pandemic, you don't want people not to speak to you. You don't want to be walking down the street and see somebody who you hadn't seen in a long time. And you say, hey, how are you doing? And they say, hey, I hate you now for what you posted on Facebook. How come you emailed me that thing? Why did you message me that? Be careful. Be kind to people. Understand what you're saying and doing affects everybody. Just so important, especially during this time. Okay, so I really like the fact that we're talking on the phone more because, again, sometimes you have to think through a little bit of what you say before you say it. We're not quite as spontaneous, and that's a can be a good thing. One of the greatest things about the pandemic, and it can help you right now, 
And I promise you, it can help you with the aftershock because we're having one right now. We'll have one again if the numbers rise. We'll have one again when this is all over with. Learn to be creative. Jen, I'm so glad you're in here. Uh, Jen Roberts, a close friend of mine, and, and I just, she's wonderful. Um, she's with Creative Aging, and I'm going to tell you right now, learn to be creative. Do you know how important that is? Creativity. Learn to take what you've got and be creative with it. Read something different. If you've always read the same thing, now's the time to read something different. Write something. There are books on this screen right here. There are those of you who literally have something to say. Now's the time to say it. I mean, how many of you out there are now journaling? How many of you are writing things down that can later be a book? Your feelings are like nobody's feelings, so you got something in there to share. It's good for you to write it down before you forget it. It's also good to write things down, and journaling is such a wonderful, wonderful way to get through this pandemic because on your very worst day, you'll remember that on your very best day. And you can go back and reference it and say, this was a really horrible day, but I got through it. I'm having a good day. Good for me. So that's something important to do. Be creative. Think of things that you can do differently in your home. Think of things that you can do differently for each other. Be creative in the way you're kind. Be creative in the way that you give gifts. Be creative in the way of writing a card. Let me get on my soapbox for a minute. How many of you write cards? Write a card. It's different than an email. It's different than a text. Listen, I save those things. I love it when people write me a card. I'm terrible at it, but I love getting it because it says to me, you took some time. You didn't just fire something off on your computer. You really took time to write me a note. And I appreciate those and I save them. Right now is a good time to be a creative writing person. Not only in what you're doing, but how you're doing it. Okay, so be more creative. Most of us have learned the art of being more thrifty. So I'm going to tell you that one way to cope with the pandemic is to be responsible. You guys... I'm hoping the economy's just going to zoom right back up. How about you? I'm hopeful. I'm cautiously hopeful, but I'm hopeful. It looks like it's going up a little bit. I want us to be safe. I don't want to be eating cat food when I'm 85 years old. Do you? I I want to think I've been responsible. I've saved my money well. I've, I've done some things that are smart things. And you guys, I'm telling you, if, if you don't do that, you're missing an opportunity. Look, remember how we used to, for those of you who love to go to the grocery store, I love to go to the grocery store, we used to. Uh, I love to see what was new. I love to see what kinds of ingredients I could get that be different and I, I can make something different at home. Let me tell you what, folks. I get in that grocery store, I wash my hands, I wash that card, my mask is on, and I'm ignoring you if I see you. Let me tell you that. I'm a woman with a purpose. I'm going down that aisle. I'm throwing stuff in. If I see somebody and they don't have a mask and there's a bunch of people with them and they don't have a mask, I'm not going to buy anything down that aisle. Now, I know that sounds a little silly to a lot of you, and that's okay. I can be silly about that. You can be silly about it too. Find what works for you. But it's important that you be thrifty right now. It's important that all these folks here on this screen who have services who you can attach to in, in a thrifty way. And I'm going to tell you what, you'll, you'll save money. So it, it's important that you do that. Next thing. We've learned uh, to face our fears head on. And, and you guys, we have to continue to do that. Got to check for time. Am I doing okay out there on time? Everything good? Okay, um, we've learned to face our fears, and we need to do that. Facing fears is unbelievably important. The fear of this pandemic, because it is a fear of the unknown, is something that we have to learn to do every day. We're afraid of things we don't understand. We're afraid of things that threaten us. Now, you guys, we are living in a world that's threatening. Um, this pandemic, again, is threatening to us. But, but here's the thing. There are some things you can do not to be afraid. And that is the one thing I said earlier. 
don't be glued to your television set. Oh my gosh, everybody's saying different stuff anyway. Who do you believe? If you turn on one channel, it's one thing. Another channel, it's another thing. Find one source that feels good to you and watch it limited. Limited. And be supportive of each other about fears. If I have a fear, uh -oh, don't make fun of that fear. Whether it's on Facebook or email or face-to-face or -face with a mask, don't make, don't make fun of that. Because my fear is genuinely my fear. And don't make fun of others' fears. Just accept it, encourage them, and move on with that. I can't tell you how important that is. Okay, next thing. Some things we can do. I want you to grab these things. I want you to hold on to these things. And I want you to use these things on a daily basis. These are the things that I do. They make me feel better. I hope they're going to make you feel better. First thing, remember that almost everything is temporary. What you feel right this minute, you're not going to feel five minutes from now. And when we get off this call, you won't feel the same way either. You will feel differently every, almost every five minutes, things begin to change, sometimes minute by minute. Now, here's the scary thing about that. We react, react based on what we're feeling at the moment, even though it might be temporary. That's why we get in trouble. You guys, that's why we're in trouble with relationships. We say whatever we think, or we spew out anger and venom, or we do things like that, and then later on we think, Yikes, I don't even feel that way anymore. Well, how come I did that? Well, you did that because you didn't think. And the one thing you have to do in a pandemic is, you should be doing that all the time, but every single thing we have to think through. Is this the right thing to do? Is this the wrong thing to do? And use your better impulses for that. And don't react. Let things brew a little bit. I always say if you're angry or distressed, if you're depressed, if you're sad, those things will probably pass. Now, I'm going to speak to you as a counselor. If those things don't pass, get some help for them. You hear what I'm saying? Seriously, if this thing has bummed you out so much, don't feel bad about that. Just get some help from it, uh, for it. And we, I can help you with that. I mean, I can help you find somebody. I can help you attach to somebody. But get some help with that. Right now, let me talk to you. I think you probably are all are doing this in the right way, but I know folks like Mary Lou, um, who's in the healthcare industry, Tom, but some of the rest of you folks, I know you know this. People don't always take their medicines at this time. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't need this. I'll just let it go. Or this is expensive. I won't buy it. I can't tell you how important it is to take your medicine. I had somebody tell me, now, I, this was nobody on this call. Please don't repeat this because it may be somebody we all know. But I had somebody tell me that they really weren't taking their blood pressure medicine much because the pandemic had sort of slowed everything down and they thought their blood pressure was okay. Thought? You think your blood pressure is okay? Somebody put you on that blood pressure medicine for a reason. You better call them before you take yourself off of it. Does that make sense to take your medicines? Let me talk to you about something else that's threatening to us. Um, I don't know about any of the rest of you guys, but uh, gosh, the joy of my life is sitting on a patio with some chips and dips and uh, about half of a margarita. I don't drink much and I'm not pretty, even less pretty when I drink. So I'm very careful with that, but that's a joy of my life. Okay, so I can't do that right now. So the worst thing I can do is to sort of emulate that experience at home with two or three martinis or margaritas or whatever I like to drink when I'm not driving. Because let me tell you why, folks. Alcohol depresses your central nervous system. If you're depressed and you drink, you will be more depressed. Don't know whether you believe it or not, but read up on it. I can promise you it's the truth. Same thing with pharmaceutical drugs. Don't take too much medicine. If it's not prescribed for you, don't take it. I don't care how many people it is prescribed to. If your name is not on the bottle, it's not yours. Don't do it. Okay? So that's important to know during change. Okay, I'm just going to keep on going, but I'm going very rapidly because I'm looking at my time here. Learn to self-soothe. It is important that you take care of yourself, and mindfulness is a part of that. It is important that you uh, are able to create a little corner that's comfortable to you 
wherever that is in your home, in your car, at, in the park, wherever that you can go and sort of unwind. That's an important thing. And the other thing is while you're self-soothing, tell yourself some positive things about yourself. Relaxation and positive imagery is very important right now. Contracting and relaxing your muscles. Wish I had time to do some of that with you. I don't today, but it is important that you read up on that and you do it. Thinking positive thoughts. Some of you do yoga, cool thing. Um, some of you just do self-relaxation. Deep breathing, taking 10 deep breaths, breathing in and exhaling out really slowly that breath. Even three or four of those can make such a difference in the way you're thinking. So I encourage you to do that. Okay. I talked about reading your favorite book, uh, sleep better and eat better. Uh, let me tell you about eat better. Um, if I don't start eating better, I, I'm going to be the product of my 600 pound life. And I really don't want to have to go that. I don't want somebody to have to take me out of here in a crane because I've eaten too much cannoli. I'm telling you, I love to eat during this time. Don't you be careful. Be careful about thanks for the hand race. Be careful about what you're eating. Be careful about what you're drinking. Just realize we're coming out of this pandemic at some time. I believe that we are. Okay. Seven, Joe, seven. Okay. Got it. Uh, we're coming, going to come out of this pandemic and we don't want to come out of it changed for the worse. We want to come out of it changed for the better because we've embraced some of these things. Next, worrying about something will not change it. I call that hand wringing in the head. I can tell you it won't change things. The things you can change, go about changing. The ones that you can't, don't worry about. You're wringing those hands in your head. You're going to cause such distress. You'll never get beyond it. If you can't change it, don't let it change you. If you can't change it, don't let it change you. Just accept it and move on to the things that you can change. Know when to step away from the things that are self-destructive. We talked about that with TV. That's also with people, folks. You know, people out there are toxic. You know who those people are. Step away from them. That's your responsibility, not theirs. Do you think they care that they're toxic? No, they don't. But if it's affecting your life, step away from it. Another whole topic, but we'll do that another time. Learn to love yourself. Congratulate yourself on how good you are. Congratulate yourself on what you're doing. Because you're not going to get a lot of applause these days. So just go after telling yourself, I'm a good person. I'm doing good things. I'm going to continue to do it. And I like me. And if I don't like me, let me hurry and find some things about me to like. Because you better like yourself. In the grand scheme of things, you know it's all you. In the grand scheme of things, when you're left with nobody, you're left with yourself. So, so do that. Now, here's what I'm going to leave you with. Listen to this. I'm going to read this. And then if you want this document, I'm going to email it to Joe and Mary Lou. They can email it to you. Okay. When the pandemic is over, we will be left with what we have invested with during this time. What we've invested in during this time is what we will be left with. We will once again settle into a new normal. And life may never be totally the same. And that might be okay. That really might be all right. We will have to relearn some systems. Uh, we'll have to relearn them. We'll have to relearn some skills that were once routine and are now foreign to us, alien to us. Hopefully we will keep the good that we learned and we will embrace the opportunity to restore the good things that we have missed. Now, last three words I'm going to leave you with. Change. Strength breakthrough. Thank you.